In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice working with the parts of circles and using that vocabulary correctly. In example A, it says find the parts of circle A that best fit each description. And we have a bunch of different words to look for, all the way up to F. So starting with part A, it says find a radius. So a radius is a segment that connects the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. So one example of a radius would be this segment AF. You could also do segment AH. So a radius would be AF. Now a chord for part B, a chord is a segment that connects two points on the circle. So for example, CD would be a chord. You could also do DG as a chord as well, or HF because all three of those segments connect two points on the circle. So CD is one example. A tangent line for part C is a line that intersects the circle just once. So that would be line BHJ because it intersects the circle just once at point H. And so H would be the point of tangency for tangent line BJ. So tangent line BJ, and we need the little line symbol over it, and the point of tangency is point H. All right, and two more, a diameter. So a diameter is a segment that goes through the center of the circle and goes all the way through the circle as well. So that would be this line right here, HF, and that's the only diameter in this circle that has been drawn out. And finally, the last one is a secant. And a secant is a line that passes through a circle twice. So the only secant would be this line right here because it passes through the circle at C and at D. So that would be line BD, would be a secant line. All right, let's go to example B. Draw an example of how two circles can intersect with no one and two points of intersection. You will make three separate drawings. Okay, so clearly two circles could not intersect if they were in different places, like this. So this would be no points of intersection. If they intersect once, then they are considered tangent. And one way that could happen is just if they're externally tangent and just touch once right here. So that would be one point of intersection. Two points of intersection, if you imagine taking this circle right here and moving it slightly to the right, it would now intersect that larger circle twice as opposed to just once. So that's how we can create two circles that intersect twice. So here are the two points of intersection, and that would be two points of intersection. All right, and finally, let's look at an example C. Determine if any of the following circles are congruent. Okay, so remember the word congruent means exactly the same. So for two circles to be congruent, it will mean that they have the same radius, or the length of the radius will be the same in each case. So let's determine the radius for A, B, and C. For circle A, the radius is three units long. I can just count one, two, three. For circle B, the radius is four units long, because so you can count one, two, three, four. And for circle C, the radius is again three units long. So that means circle A is congruent to circle C.